Today, let me tell you a fascinating story from the 19th century. A group of European physicians noticed unusual lesions, some red, some white, and some a mix of both. These had a concerning characteristic, an abnormal epithelium. Through long-term observation, the doctors made a disturbing discovery. If left untreated, these lesions invariably developed into invasive cancers. Faced with this revelation, the need for a name for these disorders arose. In 1875, a Romanian physician stepped forward with a term that would forever change our understanding of these conditions, pre-cancer. As time passed, the 20th century welcomed a new era of medical terminologies. In 1978, the World Health Organization recognized the need for a more precise term and introduced precancerous or pre-malignant lesions. However, a new challenge arose. In those days, it was thought that malignancy from any precancerous disorder would appear at the same site as the precancerous state. However, some precancerous disorders presented a risk of malignancy at any site within the oral cavity or pharynx and not just the location of the initial abnormality. This realization led to the introduction of a distinct term, premalignant conditions. So now we had two terms, the premalignant lesion and the premalignant condition. A precancerous or premalignant lesion is defined as a morphologically altered tissue in which oral cancer is more likely to occur than in its apparently normal counterpart. It includes leukoplakia, erythroplakia, and palatal lesions in reverse smokers. A precancerous or premalignant condition is defined as a generalized state associated with a significantly increased risk of cancer. Some of these conditions are oral submucous fibrosis, actinic keratosis, lichen planus, discoid lupus erythematosus. The tide of scientific discovery continued to turn throughout the 20th century. Medical professionals began to observe that even the clinically normal appearing mucosa in patients with a precancerous lesion could exhibit dysplasia. This meant cancer could subsequently arise in apparently normal tissue. Another crucial realization emerged not all premalignant lesions and conditions progress to cancer. Some remained stable, never transforming into malignancy. Then why generalize and call them premalignant lesion or premalignant condition, isn't it? And so in 2005, WHO stepped in to refine the terminology. They recommended a new umbrella term, oral potentially malignant disorders, thereby meaning to disuse all other previously used terms. The word pre-malignant was replaced by potentially malignant. This clearly conveyed that though they all had the potential, not every precancerous disorder became cancer. The currently accepted definition of OPMD is a heterogeneous group of clinically defined conditions associated with a variable risk of progression to oral squamous carcinoma. Most produce clinically visible lesions. They include leukoplakia, erythroplakia, proliferative verrucous leukoplakia, oral lichen planus, oral submucous fibrosis, palatal lesions in reverse smokers, lupus erythematosus dyskeratosis congenita, lichenoid reaction, and patients with oral manifestations in GVHD. Pop quiz. We have come to the end of this video. Please follow our videos on red and white lesions, leukoplakia, lichen planus, OSMF and lichenoid reactions for more information on these disorders.
Hope you had fun learning with us.